There's a secret list of AI tools that academics aren't supposed to touch. I've shown this list at Harvard Business School, in Germany, in Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, but today I'm gonna to share it with you. These are the tools that journals and universities quietly draw the line at, tools that can write entire literature reviews, full papers, even systematic reviews in one click, and that's exactly why they don't want you using them. And here is the presentation. So when I talk about AI writing, this is where everyone's happy that we're talking about it because it's prompt writing using chat gpt claude perplexity um even gemini to create text or sort of like use it to help augment our thoughts our writing make our sort of thoughts our story better but Everyone's happy with that. It's this next section that people start to get a little bit uncomfortable with, and that is what I dub auto writers. Those are writers that sort of like spill out stuff as you are writing. The most popular are Jenny AI and Yomu, and this is what it looks like. So Jenny AI looks like this, and essentially as you're writing, you'll get this, this grayed out text that AI writes, and then I say, yeah, accept that. And look, it's even referenced. It's easy because as you are sort of of like accepting it just says the next one look at that look it just says yeah do that next okay this is reference it didn't need a reference here okay yeah okay accept that now the thing about this and the thing that makes it sort of like a gray zone is that people have to be in control of each individual sentence or paragraph the problem is when you just allow ai to write for you that's where everyone gets very very nervous all the bum holes in the university go oh no so these class of tools that I talk about in these presentations at universities are done for you tools. That's what I've called them, done for you, done for you. And that essentially means that you put in a prompt, you go away, you enjoy your life, you come back 20 minutes later and you have a full literature re review, a paper draft, anything that you want. So the first one that I wanna talk about is Thesis AI. Thesis AI is a really great way of getting literature reviews, full in-depth researched literature reviews on almost any topic you can chuck at it. So this is what it looks like when you sign in. You can say how many papers, well we're at 30 plus or minus five. We've got upload. You can even now use Semantic Scholar to go and sort of like find the references you don't need to give it to thesis ai but what does it kick out it kicks out about this after about 20 minutes this is what it looks like look it is fully referenced it is detailed it is dense it is long it's 44 pages this and it only took me you know a little bit of time to find the references that it used and you can see that it's all completely sort of like linked you can output this to word you can output it to uh, latex in overleaf so everything is completely customizable and that's what i like about thesis ai but people don't like you using it and there's others they don't like you using either the next tool that's in the red box of naughtiness is Gatsby. Gatsby is a tool that allows you to do so much. You can discover research ideas, write scientific papers, pattern your inventions, and run meta-analysis and more. I absolutely love it. I recently did a video about this. Check it out here. But essentially, in that video, I was able to create a full first paper draft from ideas in a Word document. Absolutely love that. And then I can see if there's any gaps. I can sort of like start interrogating that output to see if it is a true story that I want to tell. It has never been easier to create a first paper draft with a tool like Gatsby or some of the other tools that I'm about to talk about. So yeah, amazing. Here are some other ones that you need to know about. As part of my presentation that I give at universities around the world, the next load of tools made me very, very excited when I first sort of like started to understand what they could do for academia and research. And that is Agentic AI. In this case, it's Manus and Jensbach. And now even ChatGPT agent can do some of these things awesomely. So let's go check it out. So over here, if we go to uh, Manus IM, look, you can see I've given it some figures and I've said, create a paper draft for me. This is a formatted academic paper. This is what it looks like. It's not completely referenced, but you can see it gives me a really great sort of like start of that peer reviewed uh, writing process. It is referenced and you've got experimental methods, you get results and discussion. You don't get the actual figures in there like you do with Gatsby or some other tools, but ultimately you can sort of like shortcut some of the most annoying things, which is generating a first draft, generating literature review, uh, giving you feedback on your paper. All of these things are now sort of outsourceable to 
different AI agents and universities and journals are not allowing you to use them because they don't know how powerful they truly are and they're worried you're just gonna use it to cheat, whatever that looks like. Anyway, there's more, check out this one. So another tool that you should know about is GenSpark, another agentic AI. So here I gave it the same sort of like uh, figures and then I just said use these figures to create a story structure for a peer reviewed paper. Then it said, yeah, okay, here's the story structure. I really wanted to know, could it give me a paper draft? So I went down here and I just said, create a paper draft, four words that just make it so easy You'll see what I mean. All right then, it went away, it did some thinking, and then it said, view the full paper draft here, and this is what it looked like. Look, it even pulled out the figures and put them in the right area. It knows this was in the materials and methods, and it also knows silver nanowires, carbon nan nanotubes. It knows all of these acronyms that it got just from this figure. I absolutely love that. And then results and discussion, it gives me a suggested sort of like story, a flow through that paper that I could talk about. Absolutely love that. So these are super powerful tools and it gets even even more powerful because some of the tools that academia was saying yes you can use and now slowly going into the gray zone mm, is that going to be the slippery slope to using these daily check it out so another tool that's in the naughty red box is SciSpace and also Elicit is about to make their way in there too because SciSpace allows you to do lots and lots of different things. So it allows you to write a report, search papers, deep review, create a literature review. These are one prompt things, even PowerPoint presentations. It has so many things to automate for academia and everyone's scared. I say everyone, researchers on the ground are excited for the potential time saving it can provide because they know and understand how difficult some of these tasks are. Universities, uh, journal editors are scared because they just don't know, it's the unknown. And also academia moves at this glacial sort of pace in terms of progress, which is kind of ironic for things that are at the leading edge of research. You know, crazy. Anyway, People are scared that you use it, but these are tools that can be automated and even now elicit, you can do completely systematic reviews um, with a few clicks of a button and a few simple prompts. That is going to be the future of academia and all of these tools that are in the red box of do not use will slowly, slowly be allowed and will be slowly allowed to use the full power of AI. Oh, imagine that, the full power of AI in academia and research. Not everyone's comfortable with this, but let me know what you think. Are you using them? If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about how Elicit just got awesome and can write literature reviews for you. Go check it out.